Hello you guys, this is Sasha and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. If you are new, hello, please think about hitting that subscribe button, liking this video, giving it a thumbs up so that I know you guys enjoy this content. And today we are doing a chat, an update about where I have been. So please, please, please stay tuned. <laughs> So my last videos, I talked about how I was approaching a year and I have been vlogging you guys, but you'll see as I get into the story, so many other things have been going on. So I just wanted to sit down and do a brief update and it has been extremely hard recording this video, but I just decided to get up and do it this morning so I can get it edited and up to you guys today because that is very, very important. Uh, I do not want to let too much time lag. So. Um, we've been trying to conceive now for over a year. I got my Marina IUD out July 21st of 2020, and we have been actively trying up until a year at that last video. So when July hit, we were still ready to go, but there were some things we noticed. My husband had some swelling in his leg back in June, and I think I kind of mentioned that when I was doing vlogs, that you would kind of see him, but, um... I didn't have him on all the time, but yeah, he had some leg swelling and so he ended up getting diagnosed with cellulite infection um, and was getting treated for that. But during the time in July, just um, I felt like I was readjusting, going back to work. I've been doing summer school, getting ready for our vacation at the end of the July um, and just things like that. And so it wasn't bad, but we got busy. It was the end of summer, work is coming back up. So there were some things that we really weren't paying all that much attention to. So fast forward to literally the year anniversary of my IUD being removed, which is the 21st of July. I hit my peak ovulation, you guys. That was my ovulation day. I believe that was cycle 14, 14 or 15. I think it was cycle 14. And so I was like, oh my God, are we designed in the stars? But unfortunately, we did not baby dance that whole entire uh, cycle. And I'll get into why. Um, so I mentioned that my husband had the cellulitis infection. We did not know that it was causing him extreme exhaustion. So we kind of talk amongst ourselves and just kind of decided um, not trying, which was very, very difficult uh, for me because I've tried, I put my best foot forward this whole entire time. And so in a way I kind of felt like we were giving up. And then after ovulation came and went, I was like, it is what it is. Our last final fourth baby, hopefully a little girl will come in God's timing and uh, we just began to prepare for vacation so it was a little emotional i did record that vlog and kind of talk with you guys about it i'm getting this stuff edited you guys i promise i promise i promise i'm not leaving you astray i'm not like gonna say i'm gonna do it and then not do it i have the content i just have been struggling so we went to florida and even though i was really bummed really hoping gosh it's been a year what does this mean do i have you know secondary infertility um before we went just for peace of mind i did reach out to my obt and he was like you know sometimes it takes people a little bit longer give yourself a few more months so give yourself to november which is perfect that's actually going to be our seven year wedding anniversary so give ourselves from july through november and then after we celebrate our wedding anniversary then i'll go set up an appointment with my doctor i like it it's an action plan ready to rock and roll we drive to Florida, which you guys, ugh, never again in my life will we drive to Florida. Never, ever, ever, ever. Um, it, I am used to driving. It wasn't that it was bad. It was just a whole bunch of things that happened. Stay tuned for those vlogs. Those vlogs, I think I have like a Caleb's birthday vlog and a Florida vlog. I'm going to put out on Thursdays because, you know, and I do throwback, throwback Thursday vlogs. So you guys can just kind of sit and watch if you're interested in that. And if you're okay, you know. You don't want to watch it that's okay too but yeah um i just kind of recorded the experience and my thoughts and everything but um yeah you guys we drove to florida we made it uh ended up being 22 hours to get down there because we had some car issues but we made it and it was the boys and my husband's first time to florida where we started to notice something was off is 
the energy of my husband was completely, completely diminished. I knew it was a long drive. I knew it was taxing on us, but it was more than normal. So we're talking about the end of July, like 20, 28th was like the 28th or 29th was the last day he worked and then we got on the road. The energy level was just mm, not there and to keep his legs comfortable because they were still irritated even after the cellulitis infection diagnosis we kind of had like a bed in the car and all the rest of that stuff and I meant to be in that car um and we were rocking and rolling when we came back from that trip so we were going for four days we got back on a Monday everybody was exhausted so we slept I was like babe you need to call your doctor but since he was tired um the doctor's office was closed by the time we woke up that Monday because uh, we woke up late like at six o'clock at night so i was like hey call him the next day he went to um urgent care so now we're on tuesday went to urgent care he got his labs done the labs was like something's wrong you need to go to the er and from that point that was august 2nd and you see today's date uh, we have been going through as a family um from those labs he ended up going to the hospital getting admitted um and finding multiple things gone gone wrong um so his kidneys were in failure and i'm going to try to do this you guys without crying or anything like that so that's why the smile is there because we've been blessed um his kidneys were in failure um severe dehydration um i mean multitude of things they did a ultrasound where they located a mass on his pancreas you guys um, so needless to say that Tuesday he was admitted and then for the next four days he had different tests going on but he was in extreme pain and this all stemmed from he was going to go to work Tuesday but he woke up and he didn't feel good he felt like he was going to throw up um, and so yeah if we wouldn't have saw that if he wouldn't have saw that symptoms and then being encouraged to go call his doctor's office um who knows what would have happened but god is able and knows all things and so um during those four days in the hospital we found out that he um from cts mris he had a massive size of ping pong on the pancreas um kidney function did improve but it was some very much concern there as well as the dehydration um, he had lost a severe amount of weight. There was lesions on the liver. And so when he was able to go home that Friday afternoon, all signs pointed to some type of cancer. Um, so literally within a few weeks, um, things completely changed. And that Friday, um, he got out was the Friday right before I returned to work. So we were trying to juggle getting the boys ready for daycare and school juggle going back to work and now he's got a very severe diagnosis and I before I missed that part he did get a biopsy that Thursday before he was released on that Friday and uh, we just had a very very um, not strict but uh, a tactical plan on what to do when he was coming home and so since then it's been a couple weeks um, we've got more information. It took a while for the biopsy to come, so it wasn't like a then and then we get it right back. It took about 10 days for us to get the results. Um, he does have a form of cancer, but it is called MET, so neuroendocrine tumors. And uh, we are making it. It is not um, like pancreatic cancer. Um, it is tumors that are treatable. So we are very blessed for that. But... Um, without going too in-depth because it's really not my story to tell i tell people i'm a passenger it is my husband's story um the weight the mental anxiety and stress because when you know it's caught in one area and now they're seeing lesions in the liver and they're seeing spots on the spine that means it spreads right and so we begin not necessarily focus on the ttc aspect thinking about time and the fact that we have a three and a four year old and that he was 48 when he went in the hospital and what does that mean for us and the amount of time and the planning and the mindset 
it was very, very, uh, very overwhelming. It was a lot of tears. It was a lot of sleepless nights. Um, it was just a lot going on. Um, and so, even though I was really emotional about us missing July, it was a blessing because it allowed my mind to be able to shift gears to what was definitely more important, which is the health of my husband. Um, so how it relates all <laughs> to the TCC component, we're still not 100% sure what to do. There are studies on it. People are live and they get treatment and things like that, which he has already started his treatment. And I don't know, I might talk about it uh, in another one, but since things are still fresh and new, like I said, it's not my story. I'm a passenger on this story uh, journey with my husband. Um, I'm just I'm still processing everything that's going on. We did try um, this month, so I didn't know when I was ovulating, but we kind of just went what we felt and discussed it because it is a type of cancer and he's going to have a treatment. He has started a treatment. The question becomes, is it safe to continue to um, treat and I can tell you that the treatment he's getting is not radiation or chemo um, And so because the kind of treatment there's not a lot of research on there's a question mark And so we're just trying to trust God and let Our faith be bigger than our fear, but sometimes you guys that is much easier said than done Sometimes my fear is off the chain um, and um, I have moments where I just want answers about everything and what to do and have the right mindset and it's a lot to process and so my emotions kind of take flight and it's like you know we just need to be done we just need to be as safe as possible um, but God works in ways that I never understand and one thing that I tell people is God will either let us know if it's a yes or a no and he hasn't given us that answer, so we just hold steadfast. And some people might not get that, and I completely understand, but I can't do anything without the Lord. Like, none of this stuff would have even come to pass if it wouldn't have literally been something where God placed it on our hearts to do in all these steps to get his diagnosis and everything else like that. So we are very, very excited. So yeah, so I just wanted to pop on real quick and just say, um, that we are still trying. In fact, I will be recording some live pregnancy tests. So stay tuned. There's a lot still in store. I will update you guys as we get more information and I have time to process. Congrats to all you guys with your BFPs who just had your babies. So many amazing things are coming down the pipeline. I'm super, super excited. Again, please thumbs up this video. Send us your prayers and your love. And I hope you guys are having an amazing and blessed day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.